are the terms atopic dermatitis and eczema interchangeable? They are, they are synonyms, except for atopic dermatitis is a very specific kind of eczema. Eczema and dermatitis are synonyms, and there's many different kinds of eczema, and atopic dermatitis is the most common chronic one and has its onset in childhood. In 80% of kids, it's under age two. There is a small subset that are said to have atopic dermatitis that's adult onset. That's a little bit controversial, and because the disease is a clinical disease, it's, it's diagnosed clinically based on a set of clinical criteria, uh, and there's no biomarkers or blood tests that you can do, and because all, many eczemas share different clinical features, you have to uh, make the diagnosis you know, just based on age of onset, what the distribution is, um, uh, and, and what the associated symptoms are, which is horrible, intractable itch. I'm a pediatric dermatologist. I used to see adults, but I don't see adults anymore. And I, I don't have recent experience with treating adults with atopic dermatitis, but there are unique things to treating children with atopic dermatitis. And because children is the, are the biggest bulk of the population that suffer from this disease, um, there's, there's unique challenges for treating children that are different than for adults. Well, we don't have great data on how many kids outgrow the disease. That's hard data to get. And uh, the, one of the fallacies, I think, in treating children with, who have atopic dermatitis by, by primary care providers is that they often are told that they're going to outgrow the disease. And it's true, while a subset does, and it's probably the minority that does, and mostly children who have really mild disease. But a good percentage of kids not only don't outgrow it, but they go on to develop other comorbidities, uh, atopic comorbidities we call that, so asthma and hay fever and allergic conjunctivitis and, and um, eosinophilic gut disease. Well, it's the dawn of the decade of eczema, and with that, we have new interest and new investment in finding better treatments for the disease. It was a huge economic burden, a health care burden for, for the population in all developed countries. But now that we have that kind of attention, we have a little bit more information about, about that. And we know that the great majority of children who have eczema based on coding uh, data, claims data analysis, we know that the great majority are taken care of by primary care providers. Lots of the those are in nurse practitioners and, um, and family practice docs and even to a lesser extent um, pediatricians and then a very small percentage ever make their way to dermatologists or allergists. It's estimated to be from 10 to 20 percent, most people are using the figures from 13 to 15 percent in the United States. We don't know what the percentage of children who have m moderate or severe disease. And even, you know, distinguishing between moderate and severe is, you know, it's just a uh, descriptive term. You know, the way this disease pe affects people is, is different from person to person. And I frequently say atopic dermatitis isn't a disease that kills you, but it just ruins your life. And so it can ruin your life if you have moderate disease, or it can ruin your life if you have severe disease. But if you have to kind of peg down on a figure, and again, we don't have the best figure for that, it's probably of the, you know, 15% of children in this country who have atopic dermatitis, maybe maybe 1 or 2% of those have moderate or severe disease, and that's still a pretty big number. Now we have investment in the disease, and there are many, there have always been lots of studies, but um, mo more on a shoestring and not quite so united, and now that there is increased interest and investment in the disease, we're having way more studies that are being done looking at the epidemiology and uh, the pathophysiology and, and the impact on people's lives.